Hello everyone, I'm Paul Lewis. I'm coming to you live from Amsterdam and I have with me Bob Dodd, aka the Doddle Max, as I call him. You can call him Rob Dodson, whatever you like. Rob, you did a, a talk today on accessibility, uh, which I sat with you, well, I sat there watching. Um, and I was sort of thinking, you know, it'd be great to kind of summarize for people who are watching this, just kind of the one thing or the one group of things you'd have them do if they're completely new to accessibility. Yeah, so uh, I think if you're, if you're totally new to accessibility. The one thing that for me was, was really useful, it felt like kind of a, a transition point for me, was actually sitting down and learning to use a screen reader. So if you're on a Mac, uh, VoiceOver is just there. It's free. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can use NVDA. It's also free. You just download it. It's open source. And the reason why is because I feel like it's one thing to, to be adding you know attributes and semantic elements and, and sort of thinking maybe you're doing the right thing. It's another thing entirely to actually fire up that screen reader. And then navigate the page and verify, like, cool, I'm, I'm doing, I'm using the tool, and, and I can see that it's working properly with my code. So that is, that is a, a huge and useful thing. Yeah. So even then, so let's say you do that, and you're like, wow, I've got accessibility issues. Like, do we have any kind of cheat sheet or way for somebody to kind of go, hey, you know what, what things are expected from me if I'm making a checkbox or I'm making my own magical whatever thing? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, for that, we have uh, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, which is, I know, it's very, very fancy sounding, yeah. And uh, the, which is this, it's amazingly huge document. I should say it's an amazing and huge document <laughs> um, <laughs> that, uh, that covers really like what it is for something to be accessible. And it's, it's built almost in like a, like a checklist fashion, but it's very, very, very detailed, covers a lot of things. And so what's, what's useful is there's a group called WebAIM, which has taken that and distilled it down to a much sort of easier to follow checklist specifically for web developers. The nice thing about learning this is that a lot of governments actually mandate WCAG compliance for, uh, for, for applications and things like that. So this is like the definitive source. Like if you want to know what a checkbox should do, this is the thing. It'll tell you uh, the keyboard support that it should have. It'll also tell you all the ARIA stuff that it needs to have. Uh, so, so that's definitely the, the resource to go to. The WebAIM checklist, and when you need to, you can and drop into the WCAG to get the super, super meaty details. And then I guess, last but not least, there's obviously uh, there's lots of tools, there's lots of resources, there's lots of things that you could read besides that checklist that could actually help you out on a day-to-day -day with your workflow. Um, kind of where would you point people towards if they're completely new to this? Where would you actually send them to actually learn more? Yeah, so uh, conveniently enough, uh, Alice Boxhall, yes, uh, my teammate, uh, fellow engineer on Chrome, uh, and I have just finished a Udacity course. It is a completely free course, a multi-week course to teach you sort of the, the fundamentals of web accessibility. Um, so you can go there, you can, you can do that course. It, you can, if you know nothing about accessibility, you're going to finish that, you're going to be, you know, uh, uh, much more uh, along your path to being a, an accessibility wizard or badass or whatever. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Um, and then the other thing, too, is, is we're going to actually start putting more accessibility content on developers.google.com slash web. So that's a, that's a plan for us to start uh, writing more about it and making sure that, that you know, when we're talking about progressive web apps, we're talking about performance. We're also talking about accessibility, making sure that that is a part of everybody's process. Brilliant. Well, that's all we've got time for. We're going to chuck some links down into the description below, um, which will include, I guess, the Udacity course and all the other things that we've talked about here. Thank you so much for taking a bit of time out. And I've been Paul. Catch you next time. <laughs>